documentation that is necessary for it can and, and can we observe basically what the process is that happened possibly can we observe the actual equipment ex itself are we in at the location that we could observe it or is it some location that we can't basically observe misstatement detected in the prior years so when if there's misstatements of course in the prior year regarding inherent risk uh regarding property plant and equipment then we're going to increase the inherent risk in the current year now complexity if we have a, a straightforward type of transaction with property plant and equipment like they bought property plant and equipment and they pay cash for it well that's pretty straightforward that's not too difficult for us to consider complexity wise although the transaction would be material and therefore something we would want to consider if they bought it for a loan then they financed part of it bought a forklift paid some cash financed part of it well that's still not too unusual we could probably consider that leasing leasing if they bought it as a capital lease or if they self-constructed the capital asset they made it themselves those are two types of things that can be far more complex for us to consider the lease in the format of a lease as opposed to a purchase and then we're going to want to put it on the books as a purchase because in substance we believe it is one with regards to a capital lease can be a bit more difficult for us to think about the accounting issues related to it if they made the capital asset themselves they constructed it and then used it they made it not inventory they made the capital asset property plant and equipment to value that can be a little bit more confusing as well difficulty to audit the transactions so the easy type of transaction to audit is an at is an assets purchased directly from the vendor so again if if you had a transaction where they just said hey i need a forklift they went to the vendor they bought the forklift if they bought a big piece of equipment they went to basically uh home depot and bought the equipment then it's pretty straightforward types of transaction again it might be material something we want to consider but not too difficult the more difficult types of transactions are transactions involving something like a donated property so if something was donated how do we know what the value is because it's not a, on a market transaction so we want to consider that non-monetary exchanges so if there wasn't money exchanging hands then that's going to increase the complexity obviously we would consider if it was an arm length tra transaction that something was exchanged to help us to basically value on a market value method and then the self-constructed assets again that's going to be more difficult if they made the asset misstatements detected in the prior year's audit so of course when misstatements are found in the prior year the auditor will increase the inherent risk factor in the current year now we want to consider control risk so recall we think about inherent risk then the control risk to, to then set detection risk that's the amount of testing that we're going to do so control risk uh, control procedure is generally part of the purchasing process when we think of controls then in other words we've thought about the purchasing process the controls should be much the same for the purchasing of property plant and equipment considering the fact that it's going to be part of the purchasing process with regard to the assertion of uh, occurrence and authorization over property plant and equipment however larger capital asset transactions may be subject to additional controls in other words uh, the company may have something in place where they're going to say this is the normal purchasing process for normal purchases if however you purchase something say over a certain dollar amount you need additional approval additional authorization for those types of purchases so we might have you know more type of things that we would have to test over and above the traditional purchasing process with regard to property plants and equipment business will have an authorization table for approving capital asset transactions control activities will also need uh, to identify assets no longer in use so notice that's going to be another key concern for us as the auditor those assets that are now obsolete or not being used that are property plants and equipment they should be removed and remember they're not always removed and sometimes it doesn't create a significant amount or effect on the financial statements from from a net perspective because the the items on the books as an asset and maybe it's fully depreciated therefore the book value is zero but still the, the equipment's on the books overstated the accumulation the accumulated depreciation is on the books overstated and therefore uh although the net is zero for that asset we would still need to dispose of it so even if the it, and that might not be the case it might still have valuation on the books and they're not using it it's obsolete for some reason so even if it's a net book of zero we want to have consideration to to look at those uh, property plant and equipment assets and remove them from the books they shouldn't be you know on the books now when we consider the property plant and equipment what we're going to do is we're going to get a subsidiary ledger of course so when we think about the property plant and equipment 
We think on the balance sheet, we have the asset of the property, plants, and equipment or the list of assets that are property, plants, equipment categorized out by land, building, equipment, and so on. And we have the accumulated depreciation, but those are all lumped together within those categories. We need then a subsidiary ledger, some type of ledger that's going to be breaking out in detail the supporting type of documentation. We have to have this information because we need to know what's actually comprising the pieces of equipment that are on the books. Now, this can be a detailed and confusing report. We need to understand that. And we also need to understand that there could be, uh, when you consider the creation of the subsidiary ledger uh, for depreciation and equipment, then typically you have to do that for uh, what we're considering, the book value. And there should be, uh, there's going to be other types of calculations that are going to be necessary, at least for the taxes, because the accumulated depreciation will be different typically for taxes. So uh, it could be a complex schedule. Information we're going to need on it is going to be the description of, of the property, plants, and equipment. So we need to have a list of the property, plants, and equipment on there. They, and it should notice that when you're putting together uh, a property, plants, and equipment, if you're recording property, plant, and equipment on the GL side of things as well, just note that unlike financial accounting, when, where, where we often just put something on the books as you know equipment, we debit equipment. <laughs> when we put it on the books uh, in real life, we want to have the description. What is this? This is a cat you know, forklift, blah, blah, this is maybe have a serial number on it. We want to know the description of what is on there. And, and what we also do not want to do is put something on the books as equipment and lump together five things. So if we bought like five forklifts and one, you don't put the thing on there as five forklifts and debit property, plant, and equipment for the value of five forklifts because the subsidiary ledger isn't going to give us the detail. We need the detail of all of all the actual equipment broken out. Because if you sell one of those forklifts and not all five of them, for example, that, that would be a problem because now it's on the books as a lump sum one kind of thing. So we need the description on there. We want the location, any ID number. So again, you don't. we don't put the books as a journal entry that we typically do with financial accounting, just debit like equipment. We need the, you know, it's, it's the, in the subsidiary ledger, it's a forklift and here's the id number related to that that item if we're going to sell it we're not going to use a first in first out method a flow method typically we're going to identify specifically specific identification of the item the piece of equipment that we are selling to do that we need to identify it in some way such as an identification number date of acquisition obviously we need the acquisition date that'll help us to consider the depreciation that will be considered on it depreciation methods for the books depreciation method for taxes so notice we're going to have at least two depreciation methods it could be quite confusing because different classes of assets are going to have different lives could have different depreciation methods used possibly given the different classes and there will certainly be different depreciation methods used between the book depreciation done in accordance with something like generally accepted accounting principles and the depreciation done by the tax code which is completely different so we're going to we want to consider both of those items we are testing for the book depreciation generally accepted accounting but we also want as part of our testing to consider and possibly reconcile to uh the tax uh, in some way because that's going to be a verification process or can help us to verify considering the taxes are another form of reporting that has been done we can tie out at least do, do the total amount of property planted equipment and each category tie out on taxes and on our books and and uh, we can consider the reconciliation of the depreciation methods salvage value that's the value that it's going to have when at the end the estimated value at the end of the useful life that we consider at least the scrap value sometimes called and then we're going to have the estimated useful life of course and that's useful life the salvage value and the cost are things that are going to help us to consider whether or not the depreciation calculation was done correctly now we're going to consider the segregation of duties related to property, plant, and equipment. So separation of duties, segregation of duties, key internal control. Whenever we think of internal controls, one of the first things we want to think of is the separation segregation of duties. Obviously, larger companies are going to be able to have more separation segregation of duties than smaller companies, given the fact that they should have more staff to do so. So first item function of initiating the purchase of a capital asset is segregated from the approval function so notice uh, part of this you're going to see some overlap of course with the purchasing process with the consideration of purchasing property plants and equipment now why would we need that because it, if it was not segregated if those functions were not separated fictitious or unauthorized purchases of assets can occur this can result in purchases of 